اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد افضل صلواتك بعدل معلوماتك وبارك وسلم وصل عليه اي نمبر 275 This ayah needs and requires a big explanation as a preface. Number one, Allah has created the whole world and He has given humans the ability and capability to utilize it. Number two, human being has intellect and because of intellect he is thinking for one who believes in any religion thinking has the limits and practice has the limits as well but those who do not believe in a religion their life their thinking their practice is free from all limits number 3 the thinkers and the philosophers they say the human history actually means disputes and conflicts means ideological conflicts ideology is something when adopted by someone he is committed to ideology is something when adopted by someone then he is committed to but ideology is sometime these are revealed these are revealed and sometime that is man made every ideology from the very beginning people are excited regarding that but after some time reaction to the same ideology happens so people who sometime back used to praise that ideologies and its carriers means the people then after some time they start condemning the ideology in the people as well yes hegel says thomas hegel and john locke they are thinkers and philosophers so they say an ideology when accepted that is called a thesis that's called thesis when reaction is shown that is called antithesis and then there is a conflict between thesis and antithesis from both side in that battle and conflict some good come out some good things come out from both side 
So Hegel call it synthesis. S Y N T H E S I S. Karl Marx was very much impressed by these three thinkers. Karl Marx was the son of a great, great sheikh of Judaism. Yes, his father was a rabbi. That's why he has that big beard. You have seen his picture? Yes, Karl Marx looked like a Salafi sheikh. Yes, I'm making only a joke. Yes. If nobody knows him, so he will be thinking that maybe he is from Salafiya. So Karl Marx was very much influenced and impressed by these three thinkers. But he said that conflict is not the conflict of ideology. This conflict is the conflict of two classes, the hells and the hell not. He comes to that side. The hells and the hells not. And he said that Hegel was standing on his head. Hegel, in his thinking, he was standing on his uh, head. I corrected his direction. I put him on his feet. That this is not the conflict of ideologies. This is a conflict of classes. Got it? So now communism, it became as a philosophy, as a science and as a system. And that was the reaction of capitalism. That was the reaction of capitalism. So you can call capitalism a thesis and communism antithesis. And whatever is coming out of the conflict of both, that's called synthesis. Got it? But communism as a system, it was implemented by force. And there is a famous saying, Living with guns, die with guns. Those who are living with guns? Yes, they die with guns as well. So communism was implemented by force. So it was thrown away by force as well. What happened to USSR? Got it? Action and reaction. Every action has an equal reaction in opposite direction. Newton third law. Third law, second law? Third law. Newton's third law. Every action has a reaction in opposite direction. Got it? Another important point. That human being is a combination of physical structure and soul as well. Should write it. But he is much more influenced by matter rather than soul and spirit. Yes. Because that is his immediate need. He feels that is my immediate needs, even though spiritual requirements are more immediate than materials. Why? And that's why people are confused, they are disturbed. Yes, they are in tension. Yes, they are taking medicine for depressions because they do not think that spiritual requirements are immediate needs. But anyhow, this is our short-sightedness that we the human we think Matter and materials are immediate needs. Now what is matter? You should write it.
And matter is something hadis or qadim. There's something. Hadis or qadim. Yani it was not there, then it was created. Or that is qadim. That is since ever, forever. Got it? So the atheist thinkers, they are of the view that matter is qadim. That's why they do not believe in Allah. Because they need one qadim to believe in and they have the matter. Yes. Every human, he needs one qadim to believe in. So we have Allah, but they, they have the matter. Then they have different point of views. Some of them they said that the actual matter is water. Some other said the actual matter is fire. Some other said that's air. Some other said that is dirt and dust. Some other say the combination of all fours. Some other say they are the molecules. Yes? So that's hell. In this regard, Nuruddin, especially for you, if you can find the book of Allama Abdul Karim al Shahristani, Al Milal wa Nihal. What? Al Milal wa Nihal. That's in two volumes. He's a great philosophy, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Shahristani. Then these philosophers, in new era, they said the existence of things in this world that is based on evolution or irtiqa. You should write it. And irtiqa in evolution is a national instinct in creatures. That is fitra. What is that? That is fitrat. And they give a very good example. Yes, to defraud us. A very good example? To defraud us. That every living entity, when it is born, it starts crying, anxiety. That anxiety is actually the national instinct. Like a newborn baby. <laughs> Yes. Now these harakat, yes, it grows him. It grows. Then he stands. Then he walks. Yes. What a good example for defrauding us. <laughs> Got it? So that's how Mr. Darwin said, how human being came to the shape of a human being after that he was a monkey. Yes, because of that anxiety. Because of what? Anxiety. That anxiety. You should write it. And Darwin said, that the actual motto of evolution is struggle for existence. What? Struggle for existence and ultimately survival of the fittest. Survival of what? Of the fittest. Our Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Mawlana Ubedullah Sindhi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, when he was condemning the theory of Darwin, so he was said, that tanazul il baqa that is natural, but survival of the fittest in the eyes of Allah that is not natural. In Islam, there is survival of the best. In Islam, there is what? Survival of the best. In akramakum indallahi atqaakum. Because to Darwin, the baqa and the survival is in this world. To Islam, survival is in the next world. And in the next world, survival is for whom? In a good shape, for muttaqi. Survival of the best. <clears throat> Bernard Shah said regarding Darwin that to me this guy was a psycho. He said that he was a 
psycho. But he said that the West believe in him like a prophet. Bernard Shaw was a thinker as well. He himself was a psycho as well. <laughs> yes, philosopher means psycho. <laughs> yes. Yes, philosopher means psycho. A philosopher came to a garden. So he saw the pumpkin plant on the ground. Because pumpkin plant is not a tree. It's a spread plant. These big pumpkins. Yes, and he saw the mango tree. That big tree and that much mangoes. So he said that, Oh Allah, why you are not taking the advice of others? I would have given you advice that this big fruit should have been there in that big tree. Because that is a powerful tree. And that small mangoes should have been here in this weak plant. But you are not listening to anybody. You do not take. Then he slept there. Yes? And with the air, a mango came down and hit him on his nose. And he jumped. And he said that, do you know what you do? If you would have listened to me and to my advice to put a pumpkin there, it would have killed me. <laughs> Got it. So every thinker is a psycho. Later on, another thinker, his name is Spencer. He said, this whole world came into existence automatically. No matter, no creator. Suddenly it happened. The Western world we are living there in nowadays, it came into existence when people were fed up from churches and the practices there. And the churches became the center of each and every evil practice. In 18th century, when the new concepts were coming into existence, The churches issued fatwa about these scholars that they are apostate, they must be killed. In the same century, the church and the state, they agreed on separation. That state will never interfere in church. But church may not interfere in state. Got it? So churches were receiving grants from the state. And state and the ruler, they were doing whatever they want to do. Nobody was there to condemn them. Yes. And if anybody condemned them, so the church supported them. The king and the rulers. You should write it. At the same time, a few people came out, like John Luther, Zongli, John Calone, Peter Waldo. They came to the public and they condemned the church and their concept.
Their motive was to reform the church, reformation of church. Got it? But as they were against the rule and the state as well, because church and state both were supporter of each other. Got it? So on one hand, their movement was against church. On the other hand, it was against the state or the system. So that's why politically they were called the protestant. But because of their movement, the church people started some reformation to their church as well. And the same like people, not the same people, the same like people, they were titled as extremist and fundamentalist as well. That they are implementing theocracy. What? Theocracy. theocracy. But because of them, certain other movements of our freedom started as well. So the first one started by the name and title of liberalism. In the second stage, it took the title of rationalism. And its third stage was humanism. The purpose of this movement was That religion is a big hurdle and hindrance in freedom and liberty. The next step, it was in politics. The base of that political movement was three things. Number one, human rights. Number two, power of general public. Number three, democracy. And number four, for the set purpose, fight. At the same time, an economical field, the industrial development started, industrialism. which took the shape of modern capitalism. Modern? Capitalism. Capital was, or still is, the pivot, or the central axis of all economical activities. Professor, is that? Yes. Number two, everybody was given the right to earn as much as he can. Number three, personal interest 
was given priority over every other thing. And number four, interference of the state and government is very limited therein. Yes or not? Yes. So the result was economical individualism. And the modern technology was a tool for that in individual, uh, economical individualism. That is used as a tool. What? The modern technology is used as a tool. So this revolution brought some good changes also. But it brought with it lot of evils. Number eight, economy destroyed the morality total, totally. Character. In capitalism, do people think of character? Say that this is good and this is not good. Number two, it controlled the politics as well. Who is controlling the politics? Those who have the economy. Those who have the economy or cousins. And number three, exploitation overtook everywhere. And number four, two classes arose there, haves and have-nots. Based on market economy, capitalism is given unlimited power to the market forces. Is it, Professor? Yes. And the result is imbalance in society. Interest, gambling, and all these evil economical practices became into existence. The basic concept in capitalism is that supply creates its demand. We should write it. Supply creates its demand. Or a system, in this system, money is the pivot around which all the economic activities cluster. Money is the pivot, access, A-X-I-S, around which all the economic activities cluster around. Got it? At the same time, another concept came into existence. To get rid of religion in human practices, that is called secularism.
What is the definition of secularism? The view or belief. The view or belief that society's values and standards should not be influenced by religion or church. Society's values and standards should not be influenced by religion and church. Got it? Another definition. Secularism and ethical doctrine. which advocates a moral code independent of all religions, religious considerations or practices. Independent of all religious considerations and practices. Got it? And secularism, religion has nothing to do with states and its practices. Religion is the personal thing of every single individual. It is not in Islam. Yes, Islam is not the individual practice of everyone. That is the collective practice. Yes, otherwise we are the Amr bil Maruf and the Hanimun Kar will go. Yes, even state in Islam is subject to Islam. Khalifa is subject to Islam. Every practice in Islamic state is subject to Quran and Sunnah. Got it? But actually we don't know much more about our religion. So even the Muslims say, yes, very bluntly, oh, religion is practice of everyone. Sir. Because we are living in secular world. Yes. God or not it? And we don't think that this belief is going against our own belief. God or not it? In secularism, decisions are not based upon values and norms. But necessity, situation and environment. Necessity, situation and environment. Selfishness is its base. Because it says, if you will make the religion a base of legislation, so you encircled yourself, you cannot go out of that. You should write it. And they say that's against liberalism. Now capitalism is based upon three pillars. Number one, rationalism. Number two, materialism. Number three, humanism. But not plural humanism, individual humanism. Humanism is good if that was plural. And as we said before, that in industry, those who have, they used to exploit those who have not. Yes. Sometime back, the labor was working 18 hours a constant and continuously. Yes or not? Then a moment came into existence. And some people, they got hung, we are in Chicago, 
Where? In Chicago. Yes or not? You know all these history or not? So the time came down from 18 to 12 hours. From 18 to 12 hours. Then the same moment was going ahead. And then globally it was decided that the working hours will be eight only. Got it? But still exploitation was going on. Exploitation was because money was the pivot. Money was the pivot. Human was not the pivot. So that's why those who owned the industry they were earning a lot and the laborers they were taking a little. Got it? So as a reaction, you should write it. As a reaction. Angels and Karl Marx. They started work on capitalism, on communism. As we mentioned before, Thesis and antithesis. So according to Hegel, this was antithesis. The base was the same. Base was the same. Materialism, rationalism, and humanism. Base was the same. Got it? And that's why one thinker said that the relation of communism to capitalism is the relation of daughter and mother. Of what? Daughter and mother. But what Karl Marx did, he tried to make individual subject to society. In his philosophy, he tried to make individuals subject to society. Socialism came into existence for three purposes. Number one, pluralism. Number two, to demolish capitalism. Number three, to implement the system on state level. Even though the basic concepts were given there by Aristotle, Plato and Socrates, should write it, before Jesus, these concepts were given by whom? By all these three big thinkers, who? Socrates, Aristotle and Plato. But Karl Marx made it a science. He make economics as a science. And that's why socialism is attributed to Karl Marx and Engels, not to Socrates, Plato and uh, Aristotle. Because they had given it as a philosopher, as a philosophy. They gave it as a philosophy. But Karl Marx made it as a science. He made it a subject. So that's why Marx and uh, his mentor, who was his mentor? Angels, huh? Frederick Angels. So Frederick Angels and Karl Marx, they are considered the founder fathers of socialism. They both wrote, wrote a few books in this regard. Number one, Communist Manifesto was written in 1848. Number two, critic of political economy. Number three, 
Then Karl Marx was collecting materials for his uh, famous book from 1850 to 1862. And he brought out his famous book in 1857, known by the name of Das Kapital. And regarding Das Kapital, even the Western world and their thinker, they said that we did not know, even though that capitalism is our system, but we did not know capital before the book of Karl Marx. Yes, he introduced us that what capital is. Got it? So he wrote the first volume in 1885, the second one 1894. No. The first one 1867, the second one 1885, the third one 1894. And the fourth volume is not written by him, that is actually compiled from his diary. That's compiled from, from his diary. Also, Angels wrote a book, Conditions of the Working Class. But actually, Angels was the financer of Karl Marx. He was the mentor and he was the financer. So Karl Marx did not have any other job, only libraries, libraries, libraries. Yes, and I think that he did not find a barber, that's why he became Salafi. <laughs> Because in library there was no barber. <laughs> Got it? So anyway, they both are of the view that every system is based upon economic infrastructure. They say civilization, culture, sociology, ethics, religion, law. Once again, civilization, culture, sociology, ethics, religion, law. All these things follow economy. All these things follow what? Economy. They say, whosoever will control the sources, you should write it. This is a very best concept, because they were thinkers, good thinkers. I am not a communist, don't think of me that I am a communist. Yes, I am a thinker as well, a student of thinking and philosophy. So they say, whosoever will control the sources and resources, they will control the politics, yes, yes or not? Yes. They will control the religion even. A sheikh who does not have Mercedes Benz, people are not listening to him. But if a sheikh will come in a chartered airplane, yes, people will gather together in five-star hotel. God or not it? And if uh, it is said that a sheikh is coming, yes, he has a big business and chain all over America. Then you will see how the people will rush to listen to him. Whatever he will speak, even hafawat, but, got it, got it, got it, that's what Karl Marx and Angel said. So now they say that human history is actually the tussle and dispute and conflict between haves and have-nots. When the Roman Empire was gone, in Europe, feudalism was established. Church, which used to condemn interest, church, which used to, because that was haram in, in Bible also. Yes, interest was haram in Bible also. That was haram in Torah also. Got it? So church, we choose to condemn interest. Now because of that feudalism, 
they gave some exceptional cases. That when the lender cannot use his money, so he deserved to ask for some profit. He deserved to ask for some profit. That's number one. Number two, if the lender sometime back got into trouble, got into some trouble, then he has the right to ask the debtor for some profit. Number three, if the debtor is not paying to the lender, is not paying, and he is delaying, then the lender has the right to ask for some profit. Now when the religious institution will allow a little bit, so the practical people, they will go that far. And that's how the interest business was introduced in Western Europe and in the Europe. You should write it. Now what is socialism? A theory or policy of social organizations, a theory or policy of social organizations which advocates the ownership and control of means Comma, productions, comma, capital, comma, land, comma, property, etc. Now Karl Marx says that in the very beginning, which is the step of socialism, you have to get rid of two things. Number one, ethics. And number two, religion. He says these are the two tools used for exploitation. These are tools used for exploitation. So to get rid of number one, ethics. Number two, religion. So this step according to Karl Marx is called socialism. Yes. And when the people will become used to practice, so the next step is to get rid of state and law both. For such like people, there is no need of state to control them. There is no need of law. Everybody will take what he needs and he will leave what he does not for others. Got it? So we call it law of jungle. We call it what? Law of jungle or jungle law. Got it? Like the, the wild beast, what they do? What they do? Yeah, they eat when they are hungry. And what they do with the extra? Yeah, they leave it there. Yes. So, I used to say that actually Karl Marx wants us to, be, to become like wild beast. Got it. But that's not practical. This step is not practical. That's why it never practiced. The first one is practiced. Socialism is practice, and still that's practice in certain countries. In China, they practice the same in our neighborhood. What Fedor Castro is doing? But even though they are called communists, but they are not, they are socialist. Because communism is not practical. Communism is how without law and without state. Got it? Now, as I mentioned before, that this was actually the reaction of capitalism. 
So evils were there and evils are here as well. Evils were there. They were an exploitation of individuals, exploitation of society by individuals. And socialism is exploitation of society or state of individuals. Exploitation of individuals by whom? By the state and the society. That was unnatural and this is also unnatural. What Islam says in this regard? The founder of Darulum Deoban, we call him Sayyid Taifa, Imam al Mutakalimin, Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin, Mambaul Fuyudi wal Barakat, Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanot, we Rahmatullahi Ali. He is the founder of Darulum Deoban, all over the world, the scholars from India, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Indonesia, Africa, those who are working all around the world, all of them they are from Darulum Deoband. So the founder was uh, Imamul Mutakallimin, Shaykhul Islam wal Muslimin, Mambaul Fuyudi wal Barakat, Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanotwi Rahmatullahi Ali. He has written a book by the name of Abi Hayat. Yes, Abi Hayat. Abi Hayat means uh, Maul Hayat. What? Water of life, or water for life. So there he said, that the whole world has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, permissible for everyone. All the things in this world are permissible for each and everyone. Because Allah says, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا he referred to this ayah, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ He created for all of you all things there on the earth. All of you, all things. All of you, all things. So they are from, he got, إِنَّ جَمِيعَ الْعَالَمُ خُلِقَ مَبَاحَ الْأَسْلِ لِكُلِّ الْأَنَاسِينَ The whole world is created for all humans to use it, to exploit it. Got it? This is the basic concept. This is the primary concept. Then the secondary is that the ownership is there. What? The ownership. But that ownership is not absolute ownership in Islam. There is no absolute ownership in Islam. Ownership in Islam is conditional. That's not absolute. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shaykh Nanauti rahmatullahi alayhi once again is referring to another ayah. Nuruddin, what do you think about our Shaykh or Shaykh is Shaykh? Because my Shaykh was Shaykh al Hadith, Mawlana Abdul Haq rahmatullahi alayhi. His Shaykh was Shaykh al Islam wal Muslimin. Malana Sayyid Hussain Ahmad Madani, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. His Sheikh was Sheikh Al Hind, Malana Mahmud Al Hassan, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. And his Sheikh was Imam Al Muslimin, Malana Muhammad Qasim Nanotwi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Got it? He became a alim in 16 years of age. And then he started studying and teaching. He built up that famous Darun like Jamiatul Azhar all over the world. Even though he passed away only in 49 years of age. In young age he passed away. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking some work from someone, so all over the world, the whole world, the whole Muslim world, they knows the name and title of Imam al mutakallimin Mawlana Muhammad Qasim Nanoti, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. And not only that, he was fighting against the British rules as well. Yes, but he was living in such a simple life that he was wanted to the British as a 
rebellious, wanted 25 million dollars of that time, for example. Yes. So once he was in masjid after prayer and he was reciting Quran going from that wall to that wall, from that wall to that wall. And somebody, the mukhbir or the informer, told the government that Mona Qasim is in such and such masjid. So the police rushed to. And the police inspector along with police, when they came there, so they couldn't recognize Sheikh Nanuti Rahmatullahi Ali. And Sheikh Nanuti was reciting and walking here and there. And then the inspector, he called him like a common layman. Are, hey, where is Maulana Qasim Nanotwi? We have been told that he was here. Yes. So as Maulana Nanotwi Rahmatullahi Ali, only one minute before he was there with that wall and he was walking. So he said, some time back he was there with that wall. Yes. So the police, yes, they rushed out that maybe he has left from that door and Maulana Nanotwi Rahmatullahi went out here from. <laughs> Got it? Got it or not? He went underground, but on fourth day he came out. On fourth day, once again he came out. So all the ulama said, Sheikh, you should have been in, in what? Underground. Because we need you. We need your advices in such less circumstances. He said, yes, for three days I went underground because Prophet ﷺ, he was in cave of sour only for three days. But now I think if I will remain for another day, that will be against the Sunnah of the Prophet So that's why I came out. Yeah, what a people they were. Yes, what a people. Ya Subhanallah, Rahimahumullah. So he says, Summa ja'allakum khalaif al ardi li nanzura kaifa ta'amaloon. Allah says, then we made you people our agent in this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say we made you the owners. We made you our agent because your ownership is not absolute. That's conditional. Now let's see that what is economics? So in Western world, is they define how to earn and how to spend. Briefly, Adam Smith. Adam Smith is considered the messenger of economics. Yes. He is the prophet of economics. He is. Jalal. He is professor. Adam Smith is the prophet of economics. How to earn and how to spend. But in Islam, keeping in view the ayat and a hadith. For you both in Arabic, Jalal, for you three. You should have the notebook as well. Because in our madaris, yes, our way of teaching and learning is like this. Because everybody has been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with photographic memory. With what? Allah has given everyone photograph. Yes, someone will be having a strong one, another one a little bit weaker. But everybody has photographic memory. Yes, when I recall my mind, yes, so I recall my mind for my writing. That is, the paper was like this. And that was line number four. Yes, I wrote it like this. From photographic memory, that's just like a book which is here. You are reading there from. So when you will be writing, you will be getting what? The picture of that writing. So anyhow, for your ease, yes? You will not take me wrong. Okay. So, based on ayat and hadith, al-iqtisad fil Islam, now I'm going to translate this book into English. What do you think? Should we? Nurdin? It will be a waste of time or not? Okay. Al Iqtisad Fil Islam.
علم وسائل استخدام الانسان لمستخلف فيه لسد حاجات الفرد والمجتمع الدنيوية حسب الشريعة That economics in Islam is that knowledge which teaches you or teaches human how to utilize the resources in which Allah has made him his agent to fulfill his personal and individual needs and necessities and the needs of society according to Sharia. This is a very comprehensive and inclusive definition of al-iqtisad fil Islam. Got it? It gives you the complete, complete concept of uh, iqtisad. Once again, Professor, you should write it. That knowledge which teaches human how to utilize the resources in which he has been made an agent, not an owner, what? An agent to fulfill his personal need and necessities and the needs and necessities of society as well. Got it? So in this definition, we condemn the capitalism and the communism both. Because in one, individuals are exploiting the society. In the other, society is exploiting the individuals. That is one extreme and the other one is the other extreme. So Nuruddin, you liked it? You didn't? Huh? That's comprehensive. Yes. That's called al jamiu wal mani'a. In Islamic Sharia, such like definition we call it al jamiu wal mani'a. The next point is that what is currency? So naturally and originally, the human being from day one agreed upon gold and silver because these two metals do not change its shape nor it decreases, nor it decreases. If you will put it inside the earth for millions of years, nothing will happen to them both. Yes? And Prophet ﷺ in Hadith also called it An-Naqdan Al-Asliyan, the natural currency. In the very beginning, human being used to exchange things as a barter sale. As what? Barter sale, which in Sharia is called Bayul Muqayada Biddwad. Bayul Muqayada Biddwad. Barter sale. Exchange of kind for kind. Wheat for barley, for example. Wheat for sugar. Yes, sugar for rice. One had extra sugar, the other one had extra rice. Yes, they were in need of the kinds of each other. 
so barter sale but there it was little bit difficult transferring things from one area to another <coughs> so that's how they agreed upon gold and silver but they were using the pieces of gold and silver as a currency later on they agreed upon a currency made of skin made of what skin but it was representing gold and silver it was representing what gold and silver and in some areas they agreed upon dirham and dinar made of silver and gold itself and to be known and recognized they put either the picture of the ruler there the picture of the ruler there and in islamic era they put some ayat of holy quran there in dinar and dirham they used to print what some ayat of holy quran and nowadays the paper is representing gold and silver but gold no more silver dollar is representing what the gold real is representing what gold in panama they have their own currency known by the name of balboa good word balboa but they said we have never seen balboa they seen officially that is our currency but we have never seen balboa they see only the the coins of balboa but balboa as a dollar or 5 dollar or 10 dollar or 100 dollar they never seen it they use american dollar yes their currency in bazaar is american dollar yes so you may not think that they are as rich as america because their the labor salary for one month is 250 dollar or 300 dollar yes but the prices are very cheap prices are for 50 dollar they bring that much stuff that they eat for 15 days got it they are poor people yeah poor people and there is people there they are muslims the panamians they are not rich people they are working as a labor the muslims they are rich people and muslims are mostly either from india or from lebanon or from palestine these three countries yes pakistanis are few in number yes a few bengalis were there yes and uh, most of them but the big city which is the capital the capital the muslims there they are from india from gujarat and uh, in towns 100 mile and so in towns they are lebanese and palestinians yes they are also well off they are also well off people and uh, alhamdulillah in every town they have a ma- mosque they have a mosque and in this uh, big city which is the capital that is the capital the whole country has uh, 3 million population how much 3 million population so in this big city they have two beautiful mosques more bigger than our mosques and that is built of bricks and marbles and very beautifully like india and pakistan got it so that was good so anyhow and where i was staying the room so there our mashayikh used to stay yes maulana asad madani maulana anzar shah kashmiri maulana arshad madani they are staying in the same room where i was staying said that this is we call it ghurfatul akabir we call it what ghurfatul akabir that this is the room of the great people so i say okay today the small guy will stay here in the room and bed of uh, the great people so anyhow and ya yeah, subhanallah people were that much attentive listeners 
دیٹ ختم بخاری ان ختم بخاری آئی ٹوک تھری آورز اینڈ ففٹین منٹس تھری آور اینڈ ففٹین منٹس آئی اسٹارٹ ایٹ سیون او کلاک آفٹر مغرب پرے سیون او کلاک اینڈ ٹین ففٹین آئی میٹ دو آر یس اینڈ دین فار دا نیو کلاس دے وار اسٹارٹنگ بخاری ایز ویل سو یسٹر ڈے ان دی اسٹارٹ آف بخاری یس آئی ٹوک ٹو آورس یس بٹ پیپل وار لسننگ سبحان اللہ دے وار نائس پیپل اسپیشلی دا سسٹرس دا ہیوج گیدرنگ واز دیٹ آف سسٹرس سو اینی ہاؤ اینڈ دا بیسٹ تھنگ دیئر واز دیٹ دے ہیو دا کوکونٹ ایوری ویئر دیئر بیکاز لاٹ آف رین از دیئر سو کوکونٹ اینڈ دیئر کوکونٹ از دیٹ بگ یس وین دے کٹ اٹ اینڈ دے برنگ آؤٹ دا جوس برنگ آؤٹ دا جوس دیٹ از ویری سویٹ جوس آئی ہیو نیور سین سچ لائک سویٹ جوس آف کوکونٹ یس سو دیر واز ون بنگالی برادر ہی واز دیئر فار خدمہ سو ہی یوز ٹو کٹ اٹ شیخ کوکونٹ سی برنگ اٹ So now after this free phase, we'll be going ahead and we will talk about uh, number one, mal, wealth, you should write it. Number two, haq, right. Number three, manafa, benefits or profit. Number four, milkiya or ownership. And number five, ذم ریسپانسبلٹی گاٹ اٹ سو وین وی ول گیو یو دا ڈیٹیلز آف آل دیٹ دین وی ول گو اے ہیڈ دیٹ وٹ ریبا اینڈ انٹرسٹ از یس ہاؤ اٹ اسٹارٹیڈ وائی اٹ از حرام اینڈ ناٹ پرمیسیبل ان اسلام الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول محمد و علی اصحاب اجمعین لم ربنا الحمد لله رب العالمین و ذکرنا من القران ما نسینا و علمنا منما جئنا و سوات و تعنا لبان النهار فلا خیر حافظا و هو ارحم الرحیم طبیعت الحمد للہ دو بجے تقریباً دو بجے اور دو دو بجے میں دیتا انتظار کو جی خبر نہ جمعہ فلائٹ بدل شو فون نیوز پہ دے ایئرپورٹ ان کو اور پے فون پہ سے بغیر دے او کرنے بیا اگر ٹولو کار نہ کو ہر طریقے سے دادا والے کا نہ اگر ٹولو کار نہ سیل فون میں بیا چل کر دے اور یہ اللہ انا محمد والا سیدنا و مولانا محمد افضل